Alrighty folks, so today we're going to be milling some LS cylinder heads. These are a set of 799s off of some sort of junkyard motor from our local Kenny u -Pull. Um We're just going to be taking as little as we can off the deck to make them straight for uh, my buddy. Um, yeah, I'm just going to walk you guys through how I do it. I'm just going to have to pop the vise off here, um, set up my parallels, and tram everything in because I haven't checked it in a little while so I gotta make sure everything's straight. Okay I got the mill all ready here I just have to put my cutting tool in. Um, I have this uh, head I made before it holds a boring bar from a lathe in here just kind of like a boring head just fixed. This is the spindle taper that this mill uses it's an odd taper can't remember the name of it right now. Um, we have our aluminum insert in here and that's going to be good to go once I put it in here. And these are ground flat on a surface grinder. So I stick them over this parallel. As this surface is parallel with the bottom, the deck surface. So all we do is we set it on here. And then bolt it down. I'll show you that later. So the first step with me doing it is, is I will clean this surface off. The valve cover surface. Uh, make sure not to take any material and don't move, you know, groove it up too bad. I just use my honing stone. This is a Norton uh, honing stone. Um, some M10 bolts in the end. Uh, make sure to clean those threads out and put them in. And then we'll get to bolting it down. This is how I mount it up here. So to get it straight, if you have the valves and springs in and everything, it's a little easier that way because you can kind of just ride them in the groove of the table. It doesn't really matter how the head sits this way as long as you cut the surface in one cut. No steps or nothing like that. Um, so I'm just going to use this to kind of straighten it up. So I'm just going to push it against those um, kind of studs there. I already have marks on the table from where my mill cuts. And then I'm going to use those same studs to hold the heads down. And like so that's not square anymore but you get the gist i'll have to do that again but i will use those bolts and hold everything down i'll take one of these drop it on like this and like that this so it has a straight pulling surface and it holds the head just fine you're not putting a lot of cutting pressure on it when you're cutting it like this this is like minimal pressure you're only going to be taking i think the max cut i've ever done on a mill doing it like this is 10 thou maybe 20 but it's a lot for a single point tool to be um rotating across the head and this like the rpm on this mill isn't quite as accurate as it would be on any other one that i've used so i'm going to go ahead and align this head again on the table as you saw it moved when i moved these um, and then I'll bolt it down and I will um, clear, just kind of scrape a little bit off so I can tram it in with my indicator up here. It's, uh, right there. So I'll get that down onto here. I'll get my tool in. I will get everything else ready. All right, the head is all squared. It is square this way. It is square this way. It is zero, zero on the gauge. And now I pretty much will turn the mill on, touch, uh, back it off and go to my depth on the knee and make my cut. And these I'm going to try to do the least amount of material as I can off of it. I'm guessing I'll be around 5 thou maybe, uh, depending if they're actually warped or not. He just wanted them cleaned up. They came off a running, driving, I don't know, later model, probably 5.3 or something like that. As you see, I got it centered now. So you have to center it for the cut. From that side, make sure it cuts and center it on that side to make sure it cuts too, like so. As you can see on the little mark there, I touched off with the knee. We are zeroed and then I'll back it out. I'll... Oh, it's taking a distance. And you see it right there. Now we will do our set. I'm gonna try for right there, right around. Uh, 
We'll take seven thou off. And now we have a perfectly flat surface. On these, you do not want the surface finish to be too fine. It will not bite a head gasket good enough. If you call uh, Kometic, um, as I did, they told me a certain surface finish um, you need. Um, it was, uh, I think it was roughly around, I think it was around 30 RA. That is perfect right there. You still get a little bit on the corner from the corrosion because it's a, you know, a truck motor. But otherwise, it is perfect. 